What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Google Pixel 6a that you might not know about. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to a bunch of different videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing and availability. But with all that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is a feature called Adaptive Brightness. Now this does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It basically adjusts the brightness of your display based on your environment. So if you're in a brighter area where it's a little bit harder to see, like maybe outside in the sun for example, it's going to brighten up the display to make it a little bit more visible. But if you're in a darker spot like maybe inside in lower lighting, it's going to dim the display to save battery. So to get to this feature, the first thing we're going to do is go to Settings. From here, go to Display. And adaptive brightness is right here up at the top. Turn it on. And as you can see, it adjusted right away. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Quick Tap. Now Quick Tap allows you to choose from several different shortcuts. And whatever you choose, you can activate it simply by tapping on the back like this. Now it is a little tricky at first, so I will show you again once we go over how to activate it. But first things first, let's talk about how to get to the feature. So of course, as always, we're going to go to Settings. From here, go to System. And from the System menu, go to Gestures and quick tap is right here at the top. So from here, of course, turn it on. And as you can see, there are several different options here. You can take a screenshot, get to the assistant, play or pause media. So if you're listening to music, for example, open your recent apps, look at your notifications, or open an app of your choice. Now, for this example, we're just gonna do screenshot, but just know that no matter which one you choose, the way to access it, obviously, is gonna be the same no matter why. So as you can see, quick tap is on, and I do have screenshot selected. So now what I'm gonna do is tap on kind of the top back of the phone like this. And as you can see, it just took a screenshot, or I guess it just said quick tap detected. Let's try this one more time. There we go, just took a screenshot. So as you can see, it is pretty simple. Now keep in mind, this feature, at least with the default setting, is pretty sensitive. And as you can see, even when I tap really lightly, it still detects it pretty easily. So if you're worried about doing it by accident, you can always have it require stronger taps. So there we go, it definitely did take a little bit more force there. But in general, no matter which way you do it, definitely a cool feature to have. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Battery Saver. Now this is basically going to put your phone in a lower power mode, and while obviously it will slow down performance and limit a bunch of features, it definitely will conserve the battery quite a bit. So to get to this feature, we're going to go to Settings. From here, go to Battery. And Battery Saver is right here. Toggle it on. And we are now in dark mode, and you can see when the battery icon changes color, we are now in battery saver mode. Now, I do recommend only using this when you actually need it, because again, it will slow down the phone quite a bit, and several other features will be limited. Now, by default, as you can see here, it does automatically turn off at 90%, so if you're charging your phone and then forget to turn off battery saver, you won't need to worry, because in that case, it will turn off automatically. Now, if you want to go real crazy with the battery saver, you can also use extreme battery saver, and this is basically going to disable a bunch of apps and stuff like that. Your phone is basically going to be useless, but again, at least it will conserve a lot of battery. So, as you can see, by default, this is never Never going to turn on, but if you go here, you can have it ask every time or always use as long as the battery saver is on. So I'm just going to select this so you can see what it looks like. Go back to the home screen, and as you can see, pretty much everything here is disabled. So again, if you're planning on using your phone at all, I definitely don't recommend having this on. Now turning on the battery saver is easy enough, but I'm going to show you an even quicker way to do it. So all you got to do is pull down the shade like this, go to the next page, and battery saver is right here, tap on the icon and it's instantly going to turn on. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your NFC settings. Now beyond turning on NFC in the first place, which I believe it comes already on, you're probably not going to have to mess with these, but if you do, what you're going to have to do is go to settings, from here, go to connected devices, from here, go to connection preferences, and NFC is right here. So as you can see, it is on by default. You can also require the device to be unlocked to use it, and if you go to contactless payments, you can choose which platform to use. So if I go here, by default, ironically, there is no default. I feel like on every Android phone, it's almost always Google Pay. So it's kind of weird to me that it's not like that on a literal Google phone. But that being said, if you do have a specific default you want to select, you can do that here. Now we're going to go over some color settings. Now on the Google Pixel 6a, the color settings are surprisingly simple, but we have at least a couple different options here. So first things first, as always, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to display. And from the display menu, you're going to want to go to colors. 
So as you can see here by default, it is going to be adaptive. You can also do boosted, which is basically going to make everything a lot more vibrant. Or you can do natural, which is pretty much the complete opposite. So it's definitely up to personal preference here. I usually like to have it at boosted. I don't know why I left it at adaptive. But again, definitely play around with it and see which one you like the best. Now from here, if you go back to the display menu, you're also going to get the option to turn on a feature called nightlight. So if we turn this on, so as you can see, the nightlight is basically going to make the screen look a little bit warmer, and this is going to help filter out blue light that can be hard on your eyes. And if you go to the nightlight bar, you can customize the intensity, and you can also schedule it. So if you want it to turn on from sunset to sunrise, for example, or you can use a completely custom time. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to turn off the Google feed. Now in case you don't know what it is, the Google feed is basically this thing right here. I've personally never gotten any use out of it. In fact, the only reason I have it on in the first place is just to show you guys how to turn it off. So let's take a look at how to do that. So what you're going to do is press and hold your finger on the home screen like this. From here, go to home settings. And from this menu, where it says swipe to access Google app, you're going to want to turn this off. And now if you go back to the home screen, the Google feed is no longer going to come up. The next thing I'm going to show you is a really quick and easy way to access Do Not Disturb. Now there are plenty of ways to do this. You can do it from the settings, or you can pull down the shade like this, and Do Not Disturb is right here. But I'm going to show you a gesture you can activate that's actually the fastest way to turn on this feature. So the first thing we're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to system. From this menu, go to gestures. And you're going to go down to where it says flip to shh. So tap here. Toggle it on. And now with this feature on, whenever you want to activate Do Not Disturb, all you got to do is put your phone face down like this. You are going to feel it vibrate really slightly, and that's pretty much it. And then when you want to turn it back off, all you got to do is pick your phone right back up, and it's going to go back to normal. So definitely a cool feature with a kind of funny name, and I would say it's by far the quickest and easiest way to activate Do Not Disturb. Now I'm going to show you a feature called One-Handed Mode. Now this feature is exactly what it sounds like, basically makes it a lot easier to use the phone with one hand. So what we're going to do is go right back to the gesture menu, so settings, system, gestures, and one-handed mode is right here. So toggle it on. Now keep in mind this is actually kind of tricky at first, but basically to activate one-handed mode what you're going to do is swipe down like this, and it has to be at the very bottom part of the screen. If you do it anywhere else it's just going to open your notification center, and it gets kind of annoying. So as you can see right here it's doing pretty much nothing, but if I go like this, one-handed mode will open up. But definitely keep in mind if you're not used to doing it, it can be a little tricky at first. But let's try that one more time, this time from the home screen. There we go. And as you can see, it is a little bit easier to use the phone with one hand. And if you want an easier way, what you can do is turn on one-handed mode shortcut. And this is basically going to make a little button here on the side. So no matter what you're doing on the phone, all you got to do is press this button, and one-handed mode is automatically going to turn on. But I personally feel like this button is kind of annoying, and really once you get the motion down it is pretty easy. So again, one last time just in case you missed it. There we go. And if you want, you can also have it show notifications instead. So like this, I personally think this is kind of useless because even by default all you need to do to get to your notification center is pull down the shade like that, so it's really not that much of a difference. But anyway, that's one handed mode. Again, a little tricky at first, but it's definitely nice once you get the hang of it. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a screen recording. To do this, pull down the shade twice, go to the second page, go to screen record start, it's going to have you choose your audio, so by default it's just the device audio. And when you make your selection, be sure to turn it on, otherwise it's not going to record anything. So once you have everything all set up, hit start. There's going to be a countdown at the top. And now it's recording. Obviously you can record as long as you want. And when you're done, pull down the shade and tap right here to stop. And as you can see, it's saved right to your photos. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is more of a piece of advice and not necessarily a feature, but I will say with not only this phone but pretty much any Android phone nowadays, I definitely recommend regularly checking for system updates, and if there is one available, update as soon as you possibly can. This is going to ensure that you not only have the latest version of Android available, but also that your phone is running as well as it possibly can at all times. Now in case you don't know how to check this, what you're going to do is go to settings, from here go to system, from this menu go to system update. And as you can see with this phone it is currently up to date, but as soon as an update's available it should show up here. Now in case it doesn't for whatever reason, I personally recommend hitting this button right here just to double check, so like this, and it's going to check one more time. So again, it is up to date now, and most of the time things should go automatically, but again I personally like to check it every now and then to make sure, just so you can maximize your phone's performance and your overall experience.
But those were my tips and tricks for the Google Pixel 6a. In general, this phone is really simple and straightforward like any Google phone should be, and so far I'm definitely happy with its features. Now once again, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as information about pricing and availability because of course this is always changing. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram, and as always, I will see you in the next one.